All right, we're gonna talk about three different things today. The first is going to be a hip-driven stroke. The second is going to be talking about your breath. And the third is gonna be talking about your kick. But the first one here, we're gonna talk about your stroke and how right now it might be a little shoulder-driven and we wanna work on getting a hip-driven stroke. Um, and we wanna use your rotation to power your pole and help activate larger muscle groups and really keep your body more streamlined. And we wanna imagine your body as a coil that kind of gets wound up from your hips in order to generate power in your pole. So yes, the first thing that Max has noticed in your stroke because he was eyeing you this entire time was uh, how you kind of have this constant motion with your arms. And I want you to just pay attention to what your hips are doing as it corresponds with your arms. There's really no glide out front and your arms are really are leading the rotation um, as opposed to your hips leading the rotation. And we're gonna pause it right here because I want you to see where your arm is in the pull phase in relation to where your hips are. And this is when your hips are about horizontal and your hand is already almost done with your stroke. It's, it's on the finish of your stroke. And it's the same thing with the other side. We're gonna pause again when your hips are horizontal and your hand is completely underneath your shoulder or your head at this point. Um, and we want that to be more out in front of your stroke. And again, we wanna imagine your, your whole body as a coil and the minute we start turning our hips uh, is when we kind of spring up that action. And if we start moving our hands before our hips, we're losing all of the power that we're coiling up in our hips. Um, and here it is again, your hand is directly under your shoulder here and your hips are horizontal. Um, and we're, we're losing a lot of that hip power at the front end of our stroke, as well as some of the glide for a little more efficiency in our stroke here. Um, and when we leave our hand out front in a straight line, we can, we can propel ourselves forward without doing anything extra. Um, so here's a video of me swimming, and I want you to pay attention to the same motion, where the, where the hand is in relation to where the hips are. And as you can see, this is where my hips are horizontal, and my hand is still in the catch phase. I've only just dropped my fingertips down, and the elbow is still high, and the arm is really just getting ready to pull. So I'm winding up my hips by turning them early and keeping my arm out in front until my hips are in that power position so I can really move myself forward. And as you can see on every stroke, I am kind of just bouncing forward because I, I'm using my hips to do it rather than just my, my arm at the front end of my stroke. My hips are horizontal and arm is still out in front. So that's what we want to think about. And the first drill I'd suggest is the bow drill, and you've probably done this before. What you're gonna do is hold one arm directly out in front in line with your shoulder, and the other is just hanging towards the end of the recovery phase out in front of your head. And you wanna kick here for about two seconds and then switch. And this will teach your body to hold that front arm out in front a little longer before starting the catch. Um, and we can really practice the timing of our hip movement. So here it is in action, um, and as you can see, that arm stays out completely directly out in front and the arm kind of pauses right at the end before it enters the water. Um, and we wanna make sure that top arm, when it pauses, is out in front and not hanging out towards the beginning or the middle of the recovery phase. It should be just right before it enters the water. That's where you're gonna get the most benefit from this drill. And by holding that position with your arm directly out in front of you, you're gonna, you're gonna practice the right kind of a hip torque and position by holding your arm out in front. The second drill that we're gonna do is reverse catch-up stroke. And to do this, you wanna start with both arms at your side. Uh, and like regular catch-up stroke, we're gonna take one arm cycle at a time, but the catch-up part of the stroke is at your hips rather than at the front of your stroke. And this will help you just focus on timing with your hips as they should be rotating before the catch begins. And you wanna feel the tension build up along the side of your body. And you'll notice when you do this drill, you have nothing to support yourself except the line of your body and your hips to drive power in your stroke. If you do this completely shoulder driven, you're not gonna move nearly as much as if you use that kind of wound up coil motion with your hips before you start pulling with your arms. So again, I like to use this metaphor, think about your body as a coil, wind up your hips and let your arm follow that hip rotation. 
you don't want your arm to leave your body rotation. You want your hips to drive it and your arms to follow. The second lesson we're gonna talk about is your breath. We're very much nitpicking here. You have an excellent stroke, so I had to look for the tiny details in what we can improve. But again, that's how you're improving right now. That's how the best swimmers improve. They look for the tiny things and get the marginal gains. In this one, we're gonna talk about how your breath might be a, be a little too long and a little too big. And ideally, a small early breath will help keep your body in a more perfect line. And it'll help your limbs from sprawling outwards, which I'll, I'll show you an example of. And you always wanna think about one goggle in the water and one goggle out and getting your head back to neutral as quickly and early as possible. So here, I'm gonna play this in real time and I just want you to notice how long your breath is in real time. So your, your head really kind of stays up and then it comes back down. And we can make that a lot quicker and a lot smaller to where it is barely even noticeable. And I want to show you what happens when you take a big breath. So right now, this is your body in a perfect line before you take a breath. And when we play this and your head comes up a little before it takes the breath, and then you take this big sweeping breath and your whole body kind of sinks below the line and angles downward. When your head stays low, and your breath is really small, your body doesn't even have a chance to get into this kind of awkward, almost like resistant position in the water. You can keep this very good line throughout your entire stroke with a smaller, quicker breath. And this breath is better. Your head is still up high. You're still angling a little downward, but I want you to see where your goggles are in relation to the surface of the water. And this is a good look at it. Both your goggles are out of the water right now and your entire mouth is out of the water. We can make sure that breath is smaller by keeping the crown of your head in the water while keeping one goggle in and one goggle out. And you can also see your arm is moving outward to support that awkward breath. And if it's small, again, your body doesn't need to support yourself in this sense. And this is again in real motion just to see how long that breath is. Um, and I'm gonna play this next to uh, a couple clips of me swimming and I just want you to see how quick that breath is. And I'm gonna slow it down here. And this is kind of hard to tell, but you can even see my goggle under the lane line here. That's how small and quick this breath is. There really isn't too much disruption in my line when I'm swimming. There is a little bit, my breath actually is not that great, but I have learned to keep it really quick and short, which helps a lot. I want to pause here too, just to show you, my head is already back in the water before I start the power phase, the catch phase of my stroke. If your head is out of the water when your stroke is beginning, you're, you're adding a lot of resistance and you're losing a lot of power out front. The breath is just inherently the worst part of swimming. It kind of screws everything up. So the smaller we can make that disruption um, when we take a breath, the better we're gonna be. And a couple drills to help with this. They're pretty simple. It's a little drill progression. The first one is side kicking. So we're just gonna kick with one arm out in front and the other at your side. We're gonna keep a steady kick and you're just gonna practice taking really small periodic breaths and we want to focus on rotating around the crown of your head and we're really looking for little to no excess motion the breath should be quiet and you want to think about your ear next to your arm the entire time when you rotate your head your head should stay really tucked in next to your bicep that'll help you just keep your breath as small as possible. This one is really simple and it's just kind of the first evolution of this progression. The next drill is a two stroke quick breath. So it's really the same thing, except we're gonna take two strokes followed by a very quick breath. And then we're gonna hold that one arm out in front um, for a couple seconds, like the previous drill. This is just gonna help us decouple our breath from the hip rotation. So it's very common to see your head turn with the rest of your body but we wanna decouple those two. We want your breath to be independent from your hip and shoulder movement. It should be a really quick motion as opposed to your hips are just constantly in motion, rocking back and forth. You do breathe to both sides. That actually helps your stroke get very symmetrical. Practice this breathing on both sides so you can nail it no matter what side you're breathing to. The third lesson, again, we're very much nitpicking. <laughs> I had to think critically about what we want to do for a third lesson, but the ideal kick uses both the up and the down kick to generate power. 
And you've probably heard this before, um, but you might have lost touch with this. I know we don't do a, lo a whole lot of kicking in Masters, which is probably the reason for this. But we want to think about keeping your kick in the box, which means a really small, tight, powerful kick, and tightening your glutes and hamstrings to pull your legs upward rather than letting them float to the surface. And this is the first thing that I noticed is there really is no white water going on. Your kick is, is just kind of floating, and I know we probably weren't swimming too hard, but your left leg kind of kicks out, and it, it's just a sign that our kick is not as tight as it could be. And you know, when we slow things down a little bit, you can see your legs have a nice kick down, but then they just kind of float up to the surface. There isn't too much hamstring and, and snappiness on the up kick. Here's a clip of me swimming. So you can see every down kick is followed by a really rapid, tight up kick. There's a down kick and a really tight, springy up kick. Um, this will add a ton of power to your kick, and really, like, if you're just using your down kick, you're using half of your kick. We can double, double the propulsion in your kick. The first drill, really simple, just vertical kicking. You can do this during warm-up or cool-down or just in between sets. It's just kind of keep your arms out of the water. You don't necessarily have to do it in streamline, but you can if you want to add that extra, like, 10-second burst. But just simple vertical kicking, feeling water on both sides of your feet, and snapping your legs up and down using your hamstrings and tightening your glutes um, and yeah the extra challenge is to try it and streamline the second drill i don't have a good video but we just want to practice swimming with an aggressive kick and for this i like to do a 12 beat kick so you can really slow down your arms for this at first um, or even start by just doing catch-up stroke and doing a 12-beat kick, meaning six kicks per arm cycle. And to give you some reference, right now you're doing a, a six-beat kick, which is three kicks per arm. So double what you're doing. And it'll feel really tiring and really exhausting, but it'll help you translate kind of what we're doing in the vertical kicking, that snappy up and down kick into something we can incorporate in your stroke. There's no room for excess leg motion in this drill. All of your leg strength will go to propelling yourself forward, which is what we want to practice. So that's it. The summary here, we talked about the three things. First, your hip-driven stroke uh, and simply unloading your hips before your catch. Um, bow drill is great for this, as is reverse catch-up stroke, uh, to both practice keeping your arm pausing out in front and the timing of your hips to your pull. Um, the second one is breathing, so we want to breathe early and quickly to ensure, um, like, minimal slippage in the front end of our stroke and minimal disruption in the flow of our body rotation. So a couple things to help here, side kicking to just practice per perfect breathing technique. And the second is a two-stroke breath, so incorporating that perfect breath into a stroke. Um, and then the third lesson was kicking, and we just want to think snappy, strong kicks, um, keeping them nice and tight without sprawling our legs out um, to just optimize your leg strength. Um, and a couple drills here, vertical kicking, you know, again, just try to warm up or just in between sets while the coaches are talking. It doesn't have to be aggressive. Um, and then the second is a 12 beat kick. So just while you're doing your drills or doing catch up stroke, um, just try adding a really, really fast, powerful kick. Um, and that'll help incorporate, uh, you know, your leg strength into your stroke. So hopefully this is all very helpful and let me know if you have any questions.